Okay, good morning, everyone. It's 8.30. Um, it's uh, Monday, June 20th, and this is the Jefferson County Board of Supervisors meeting. Um, I think this morning we're going to start off with, instead of acknowledge the minutes, we're going to go ahead and meet with Nick Bronson recording our, uh, regarding change from Voya to T. Row Price. So this is something that the supervisors had reviewed quite some time ago during budget time period. We found that making a change like this is going to save our employees money and fees when it comes to what's taking place with uh, their current um, savings in their VOIA account by this move. So I think I'm gonna leave it to Nick to go ahead and get us kicked off here. Good morning, Nick Bronson, uh, Two Rivers Investments. Um, Darren was accurate with his statements there. Uh, I think everyone is interested and it makes sense for everyone besides one little point that we've come. There's about um, 10 or 12 people in the plan with fixed accounts. Um, they're not in the market. They're grandfathered in at 3%. So the big issue with real price is they are going to be moving to a fixed account that's earning two percent so we wanted to approach these people and do our best to, to help them out i've reached out to all of them that i have a phone number for or some sort of way to correspond with them um 90 percent of them are quite pleased with moving over to the two percent they're they're fine with it and they also have other options outside of even staying in the plan so they're okay but there's a few folks who are pretty upset. Um, and there are also a sizable amount of the plant, a sizable percentage of the entire plant. So we reached out to Voya and T. Rowe Price to see what we could do about that. Essentially what I needed to come here and let you guys know was we worked up a way to move 20% of their assets over to T. Rowe Price each year for five years. So everything that remains at Voya We'll get the fixed 3%. The 20% that moves over each year is going to move into the 2%. So it just allows them to have that longer. Um, and it's a slower drip of their funds getting moved. We also found another solution. Um, so both are on the table at the same time or one or the other. So it's up to you guys. The other solution is we don't have to move everyone we can leave a few folks behind at Boya and they can just remain there, always have their 3%. It doesn't cost the county anything for doing that. Technically, you guys would have two plans. You'd have to have a very, very small plan at Boya with two to five people. Everyone else would be moved over to t Row Price. Any new dollars that want to be contributed in any way should go to T. Rowe Price. We should leave Voya closed as it is. Um, so that's, we can do both. We can do both, move everything over at that for people who want to, and we can leave people behind at the same time. So um, my question with the people that would remain in Voya, do they continue to contribute no. into that? No. They would have to start contributing into a new T. Rowe Price account. It's just their money would remain with the location that it's at now because it's been there for X many years. For yeah. X many years. But right. they would also have a new account forming with T. Rowe Price. Correct. Then, and that plan, if they're going to stay with the same type of plan or similar plan, would be at a 2% Correct. instead of a 3%. Correct. But okay. all their money would remain, that they, they already have accumulated, would remain at the former company. What happens when that person retires? Um, I hope within as fast as we can, we get everyone to retire and move away from Voya. So we just have the one plan. But they can stay in that plan as long as they want. There's no way to kick them out or close it out until everyone decides to leave. Okay, but it's only <laughs> those plans in which people had a fixed rate interest return mm -hmm. on their money mm -hmm. that have that option to stay in VOIA. Um, well, everyone has the option, but the only the people with the fixed account would it make sense for. Everyone else is actually getting a better deal by going to T-Row Price. It's cheaper. 
it's cheaper for right. them for fees yeah. for actually handling their money yeah. to do that. So if you're not into the fixed account, everyone else, it makes sense to move. Okay. So um, really, I kind of imagine this to be super specific. I imagine two to three people staying behind a Voya and the other 95 moving to two bill price. Um, if you can do that, it probably makes the most sense. Yeah, if that's that, if, if that's an election everyone. by themselves, yeah. yep. you know, that doesn't affect the whole no. other change and no that cost. we've been talking about. Yep. Um, basically, <laughs> Darcy or whoever's in that plan sponsor role and myself would have to just know that they exist and help them through the years. And that's not a bother to me at all. So okay. it's a very simple thing thing matter to to make some people really happy so well, i noticed um uh, sandy you were on do you have any specific questions about this no i don't i've already talked to nick on the telephone and he said he was presenting options today so i'm just waiting for the options i would be one of those few that would probably elect to stay at Voya with my current money and then move and do something different with future monies at T. Rowe Price. Yep. No, if you can accommodate that, I think that's oh, yeah. pleasurable. Yep. Um, we, we had to work a lot with T. Rowe and Voya to get this to happen, but as long as we're all on the same page, it doesn't bother me any if it doesn't bother you guys any. Okay. And I think this was our last hurdle or our mm -hmm. last question. Well, and there's mm -hmm. no cost to the county. So. Mm -hmm. No. All fees in the plan are paid by participants on both sides. Yeah. So. All right. Thanks. Okay. I, I asked you that, Sandy, just because you had called me and I know that I wanted to set this up to try to get everyone else that was in the situation that you're in um, something so that we could make sure that you were comfortable with what's going on and uh, as well as the others that are in the fixed rate interest program. So, all right. Um, well, thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Do we have any other questions from anybody in here that may be in that plan or in? Uh... No? How, how do you find out if you're in that where it would benefit you to stay in? Um, if you're into the fixed funded Voya, and then are you in the grandfathered fund? So I want to say about five years ago, maybe it predates me uh, running the plan. They used to offer 3% fixed, and then they weren't able to maintain that. Everyone who had those monies, they, they closed it. Any new monies in had to go in at 2%, which is what T Grow Price is offering as well. Talk to me. I can look you up. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. But if it's not a sizable balance, you know, we'll sit down and do the math on if it even makes sense to have your money all over the place. Yeah. Um, one last question I'd like to ask everyone, the board, I guess, is um, are we ready to proceed? Is that, I think that was our final question yeah, as long as that's yes as long as as long as this issue got resolved yep okay susie yeah your feeling i'm ready to trust you okay um i think uh you guys just needed to give permission to darcy because she'll be the only signer so um there is a point in the paperwork where she'll have a resolution where she'll pass upwards to you guys and you just sign with the board approve the resolution yes yeah. so okay. we'll need to get that on the agenda then yeah. Well, I'll get at the point at which it's, it's and I'll give it to you guys, and then you take it from there for your next meeting. So. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. We'll uh, move on then to acknowledge the minutes from the previous meetings. We had a meeting on June 13th. We also had a meeting on June 14th. Uh, those minutes are in our packets. Do we have any discussion on those? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve from Sandquist, a second from Drish. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, motion carries. So we're going to now move on to meet with our county engineer, Dwayne Hines. Good morning. Good morning, supervisors. I hope you can all hear me well. Uh, got a bit of a summer 
head cold going on so my sinus is here but anyway um <laughs> the crews have been busy we we're in our completed our second week of contract rock they're up they got one tent completed while they were close to the quarry they were averaging about three thousand tons a day as we get further from the rock suppliers we'll get back down to that 2,000 to 2,400 tons per day range, but that's fine and dandy. Everything seems to be going well. Um, I have not had any complaints from the county residents about too much rock, so we're happy with that. We had our bid letting last week for the Jefferson County 2022 crack fill. Mm -hmm. We had seven people, seven firms take out plans, two return bids. Garner Asphalt out of Onalaska, Wisconsin was at 278, 620, and 88 cents. And then Denco out of Mingo, Iowa, who has done work in the county previously, was at 261, 978, and no pennies. Um, I gave you guys a copy of the bid tabs for your review. I have a copy of the plans in the form of contract. For you guys to have on file i will with your approval i will mail the contract to denco so that they can sign the contract send back their performance and payment bonds to us and hopefully by next week we can have you guys formally award the project okay um they came in quite a bit under my estimate i ran numbers from a few other crack going projects that the DOT had done. And I don't know if it's because I gave them the window to move it to next spring, if it fit or what, what it was, but we're about 20% under what I thought it would be, which is a, Good. a very That's nice good. surprise after we got our bids for 33rd or 32nd street. Also included our budget to date for you guys to take a look at. In the door, if you've got any questions, you can address them or we can address them next week after you've got a chance to look at them. And then uh, Darren asked me for copies of the five year plan, what we were doing each year, and rough budget estimates on what the costs were. So you guys have, I think, four copies each. So if anybody asks you for, um, a copy of it you have that and then i have them saved also so i can always print out more and last week thomas and i went to a, a local bridge seminar up in buchanan county brian care labor up there that's been county engineer for 35 years and he's spent the last 25 years really playing and experimenting with different low cost bridge replacement strategies. I think we've got a good solution for the Palm Avenue bridge that we can do mostly in-house mm -hmm. and still maintain some type of access for the homeowners that are on the other side of the bridge. Okay. I've got to run some calculations on it for the footings, but uh, I think I think I think we're on the right track with that. And this is that bridge replacement down in the southeast corner of the county, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. where the gravel turns to dirt, just on the opposite side of the bridge with yeah. one home yeah. on the east side <laughs> that needs to be yeah. accessible. Yeah. So, so my my thought is we will have to provide a rock access from the house to the northeast. For the duration of the project but we should be able to get the project knocked out in two weeks okay so we won't have a large maintenance budget on that on that level b road so i'll keep you guys posted as we move forward with it i think that's all i have okay um so we're looking at the resolution here for uh, approval of uh, Denco. Um, it's a little different. Uh, 
setup than what we normally look at with these resolutions. So I'm um, not sure which direction we want to go, whether we want to wait till next meeting. We can do that, can't we? Yeah, or do just, we need uh, to do that uh, today? I wanted you guys to authorize me to award the contract, but then you have to see you have next week to sign off on it. They didn't hmm. want to put a contract date until I had their signature and, and bond forms in place. Well, since you've reviewed the plans and um, the bids, and the bids came in less than what uh, you had initially anticipated, which is a good thing, I think we could uh, go ahead and authorize Duane to award the contract to uh, Denco highway construction corp and then have a our resolution for next week um written so that we can go ahead and approve that at that time right does that that work for you susie yes okay all right we'll go ahead and allow you to award the contract to denco and let them know so if for some reason they happen to be able to get started on it in another week he can jump right after it mm -hmm. so okay all right let's move on then to um we will move to uh discuss and consider fiscal year 2023 employee salaries for secondary roads um last week we had a few minor changes that we pointed out that we needed um, on this to approve these. And um, I would take a motion to approve the rewritten um, resolution, be it resolved by the Jefferson County Board of Supervisors uh, this 20th day of June, 2022, that the following wage rates and classifications of secondary road and full-time employees be effective July 1st of 2022 and this reflects the 5.5 uh, percent uh, pay increase that was authorized by the um or recommended by the compensation board earlier this year that the uh, board of supervisors adopted so um i would accept the motion to approve the resolution so moved Second, is there a discussion? Mm, I've got some discussion. Okay. I've got a problem with the uh, new office manager. You know, she got the same salary and then now getting a raise on top of that <clears throat> is close together. So I just want to have some discussion about that. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, those other folks that we've hired in the past 60 days, are they getting that 5.5% raise? Is Darcy getting a 5%, 5.5%? Because we need to fix our handbook. Mm -hmm. I do agree with that. But right now, there's nothing in the handbook that prevents us from doing that. Right. So, so let's talk about steps to get that handbook fixed, because we keep saying we need to fix it. Well, so. I suppose that's us mm -hmm. getting a hold of our HR and sitting down and doing it. Yep. Mm -hmm. So what do we want to do in the meantime? Because this, this is something that the rest of the people on this list. Um, you know, I'm sure the sheriff's department has hired somebody in the last 15 days. That affects them too. You know, if it's not in our handbook, we've got to go ahead and give it to them. Right. So we've got a motion in a second to approve this resolution. Did you second? I didn't second. I seconded it. That way we could have the discussion. Okay. And um, I'm going to call for the vote then. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I'm going to abstain because I just I have a problem with that. But okay. Do you have a problem with just the one person? Do you, or no. The, 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 uh, no. The I think 
I think the salary was pushing the upper limit at the time. And so and, and we beat this horse to death. Yeah, that's true. Um, you know, if Melissa worked or if the employee in question still worked here, they would be working mm -hmm. 1950 hours at the true sure rose department, they're working 2080 hours. Yeah. That's 130 hours difference, three and a half weeks a year. You know, I we need to fix our handbook. Yeah. That's the answer to that. Yeah, I do agree with that. So with that case, I will vote yes. But under the agreement that we fix that handbook, hopefully in the next month or two. So you're changing your vote from abstain yeah. to yes. Okay. With that caveat. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> we'll set up a meeting with uh, our HR representative and we'll get this taken care of. But we'll go ahead and... Right. Do you want to get that set up? I will. Okay. All right. So then it is approved three to nothing. Signatures here. Find me a All right, moving on to um, discuss and consider appointment of deputy treasurer and driver's license examiner. We have a re resolution uh, that says be it resolved that Cody Crew is hereby appointed as deputy treasurer and driver's license examiner effective July 1 of 2022. So before we get into this, can you review? I know it's been like a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. The, I think the ticket raises at that time. Mm -hmm. So help me understand why, again, I mean, it hasn't even been two years becoming a deputy treasurer. How, how many deputy treasurers do you have? I have one, right? Okay. And how many will you have after today? Three. I think of three. So why do you need three? That's the way that it was established before. Um, at one point, we had four in the office. So but you guys approved the rate, the money already. This is just the title. Right. So if he gets us, it's like an 18% raise, which seems like a lot, right? Did I read what you sent me correctly? Detect, probably, yeah. So that's what I have a problem with. You guys already approved the salaries, though. All this is the title. Salaries were approved. I'm just changing the title. This has been a few years. What do you mean we approved? I thought this is the approval of the salary. No, there's no salary amount on this. This uh, is just, just for approving titles. the deputy treasurer mm -hmm. title. Mm -hmm. Yep, this okay. is just titles. So we approved the salaries when? Last year. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, we've got uh, two resolutions. This first one again is for Cody Crew uh, to be appointed as deputy treasurer and driver's license examiner effective July 1st of 2022. Do I have a motion to approve? You have the money mark, is that correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is only. And this is according to the plan you set up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, because I know he's he's started them extremely low, mm -hmm. kind of like Bart does with the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. jailers, because at that time we were like, it was had that discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a motion? 
Mm -hmm. No, I have asked for a motion. That, I just want to look There's never been a cap on the number of deputies. Like, right. No, I know that. First or second deputy, it's just a straight deputy. Make so many. Okay, I have a motion from Drish. I will second it in a minute. I just want to see. Okay. Okay, I'll second. Okay, I have a motion from Drish, a second from Sandquist. All those in favor of the resolution say aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. Okay, so we have a second resolution in front of us for a very similar thing. Um, be it resolved that Allison Nicholson is hereby appointed as deputy treasurer, motor vehicle, property tax, uh, effective July 1st of 2022. And again, this is a title for that person in the treasurer's office. Okay, I make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion from Sandquist, a second from Drish. All those in fa favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. All those opposed, say <clears throat> sign. Motion carries. Thanks, Mark. Okay. Move on then to um, discuss and consider the hire of an office manager for public health department. Um, we don't have any supporting documents to go along with this. You want to come up and explain to us a little bit about this? Yeah, and you guys get the work session. You got job descriptions. Uh, we're handed out that night. So mm -hmm. This is the follow up from the uh, joint work session between the Board of Health and the Board of Supervisors that was held on the, the what was it? Whatever that Wednesday was. Mm -hmm. the, it was June 18th, yeah. whatever it was. Yeah. 18th. Anyway, I don't know how far back you want me to go or how in detail you want me to go. We can start with the FY23 budget if that's what you want to start with. That's probably the best well, place to start with yeah. the decreased allocation in, in the budget cut. Or do we want to start with the current budget? We can start with the current FY22 budget. It's, it's all encompassing D. Okay. So as you know, the uh, health department had a decrease in allocation to their FY22 budget for about $22,000 and some change to pay for the juveniles housing bill that had to come out of the general fund. And my department was charged with the biggest majority of those dollars. So at that time, we were not able to hire an office manager based on where we were currently at in the FY22 budget. Because um, it was done really with no input from the department manager. I would or like understanding. To clar clarify one thing. Sure, go ahead, Dean. It was a less percentage of your budget. DHS had a 10% hit. I had 20, I had the biggest hit. The, I had $22,000 taken on my FY22 budget. But how much budget. percent is that of your budget? The only reason I had the money in my budget was because I had not hired an employee. I'm down two employees coming out of the pandemic. So that was the only reason those dollars were sitting there. So right now the health department has four staff members. As you guys know, mm -hmm. this was all discussed at the work session. So we're starting yeah. over. So with that being said, with the $22,000 taken out of my FY22 budget, my current budget, um, and then with a significant decrease in allocation, if you look at the bottom line of my FY23 budget, it looks very close to the same. However, there's some things that have been changed across the county with budgets, um, with insurance, et cetera. So it looks very similar. However, that's not the case. So we have about 
you know, 61, almost $62,000 from the uh, line item for all departmental staff. That doesn't have my staff, my budget in there. It has the other department, man, the other department employees in there. So with that being said, I don't have the money in my current budget or my FY23 budget to hire an office manager. We have four nurses that are employed at the health department. That's it, four nurses. And you're paying the highest paid person in the department to do office administrative assistant work. And I don't have time to do it. Neither do the other nurses. So that's where we're at with this situation. There was no decisions made at the work session because it was just that, it was a work session. I do have a copy of the job description, however, and you guys were duly informed of that as was Jack Reed. I had him look at the job description. Um, it's similar to the job description when our office manager left three years ago. And then those duties have been picked up by the nursing assistants coming out of the pandemic. And then they've been picked up by me and the other staff. So you're welcome to look at that job description if you want to. I did arbitrarily plug in $20 to $25 an hour in my FY23 budget, but that is since a moot point. So I'm here today to request some CARES funding to offset the budget cut so we can move forward and hire an office manager in the public health department. I have some questions. Sure. Absolutely. Let's say you proceed forward with hiring an office manager mm -hmm. today. Realistically, when can you get them hired? If they're if probably they're not the next fiscal year. Not like, until FY20, probably the end of July, because mm -hmm. most people, if they're leaving a job, they have to give you know four to six weeks notice. That's the professional thing Correct. to do. Right. And then, um, you know, or if they're coming out of retirement or if, they, if we would look at the job, mm -hmm. the pace on, depend on, depending upon his or her skill set, maybe it's something that we will only need a part-time person. I can't say that. Sure. It would depend on their skill set and what they feel the work would entail. But it's easier sometimes to have a full-time person and, and list a full-time job than a part-time job and then we could adjust accordingly. However, um, you know, we have a lot of vacations in our department because we're all tenured staff. We've all been there for a long time. Um, I don't like leaving the office unattended. I don't like putting a sign on the door and saying we're out serving others. You know, I don't think that bodes well. In, in my opinion. Yeah. You shouldn't work for a part-time person. I agree. Be, but... Hard to find one. Yeah. Um, there again, I like the low, I like the $20 an hour better. Well, I do too, but yeah. it depends on the right employee and what he or she brings to the table. Yeah. You guys know that you have to pay for, and, and I know that for staff. I, I just, yeah. You know, just, I think our history speaks for itself when, it, when you look uh, at the salaries uh, of the health department, that's the next item on this agenda, but yeah. we'll have that discussion in a minute. That's no, that's no deal. Yeah. I agree with you, you know, Susie. I have no issue with you hiring somebody just on a personal basis. I was over there to get a COVID booster and the phone rings and the gals had to answer the phone and take you know that call. And I understand that. But in most medical offices or something, that wouldn't happen. Right. You don't you have know? the nurses answering the phone. Correct. <laughs> yeah. It's not good continuity of patient care. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, although your your folks do it and do it do a good job, it it just detracts from something because it takes their mind away from what they're doing. Right, right. Um, that's just my two cents for right now. Thank you. I, I agree. Any input? Well, I'm, I guess I need clarification because on the agenda, it's got discuss and consider the hire of an office manager for public health. So what exactly is it that we need to do today? Well, you need to give me some money back in my FY23 budget is what needs to happen. That's what we were discussing at the work session right. and that never got <coughs> clarified because we couldn't take any action. But you really do need the money I, after the one. I, yeah, I don't need the money today. Okay. But I don't want to, here's you, the deal. Are you saying you want to, you want to know you have yes. the money? I'm not going to post a position I and not have funding I to pay that position for FICA IPERS insurance. I do know in the FY23 budget, I had a conversation with Shannon and in the insurance line item with the changes that was that were made, there were 
there was enough insurance allocation for five employees. I did clarify that because I did not know for sure. So I clarified that. So there's insurance money in there. There's just not enough salary FICA or IPERS in my FY23 budget to hire this person mm -hmm. with a decreased allocation from the request of the Board of Health. Yeah. And that's not saying that we're going to need all, you know, the fundable thing, but I'm not going to hire somebody and then come to the Board of Supervisors and say, I need a budget amendment in March or April and then not be allowed to, to process and get one. Not that that's happened before, but that's not good business. I'm not going to hire somebody and not understand that everybody's on the same page. The Board of Health is in support of hiring an office manager. And that's why we've been dragging our feet with everything that went on with the current budget. It put us in a very awkward position. And I'm not going to use the budget amendment for everything in my FY22 budget because we didn't move forward. I was waiting on IT quotes. So we're not going to use that $35,000 for part of that FY22 budget. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line of my budget is going to look different so is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and I'm not going to use all my FY22 money because we didn't hire anybody. Yeah. Right. I would so like to have hired somebody. That, yeah. It went back to the general fund. It will go back to and the general fund. It helped the uh, young men. Yeah. Right. Yes. And the thing of it is, I don't know exactly where I am because it's hard to know. I mean, I have a sheet that was dated 6 8. I could get another one from Shannon or Abby. But I mean, there's going to be money that's going to be returned to the general fund mm -hmm. right. that's mm -hmm. not going to be distributed to the current employees. So because we weren't. That's another discussion. So today Go ahead. you have what four employees? Four nurses, counting me. Right. So this will be the fifth. Okay. Correct. And, and we're that's... down three. We're down from. This will be the fifth employee. Fifth employee. One okay. office. I'm person. okay with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because here's the deal: we had an <laughs> office manager. My office manager retired three years ago. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we had some changes. Y'all know we decertified from Medicare. So, and then moving into the pandemic right after that, our nursing assistants were able to switch some of their responsibilities to help in the office mm -hmm. because they weren't providing direct care because of the mm -hmm. pandemic, mm -hmm. which we all had so much fun with. And then um, they have both taken other employment, which right. you know, I don't blame them. You know, that's totally fine. Right. So, um, but now we're faced with not having an office person. All right or administrative assistant. The job description says office manager, um, administrative manager. So is what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, it's here if you guys want to look at it, but Jack did look at it, but, you know, so. So he reviewed what's it, the difference say. between that and office assistant? Because it sounds like it's, it's not like they're doing billing and all that kind of they, thing. They will. They will. They won't do Medicare billing, but they right. will do grant billing. They will do invoicing as needed. They will do all what, of that level of stuff. So what things are you invoicing for now? Uh, vaccinations. We still do some visits. We still, I mean, different visits. We do um, all of our grants. They can help with those different grant billing processes. It wouldn't be traditional Medicare or Medicaid right. billing. Yep. Private vaccinations. TB testing. Because that's a whole nother, another different thing. Right. The grant billing is more cut and dried. Where the it is, but they're all, they're all, you still have to know how to do it. And you still have to have the time sure. to do it. And you still have to process it. But it's it. more straightforward, whereas Medicare billing was ugly. Yeah. Well, this can be too, because it's state and federal money that we're dealing with. So anytime you have a state and a federal involved, it's not as easy as just writing out an invoice and billing somebody. But yes, you're right. It's not, you don't have to have coding. You don't have to have all of that information. Yeah. So it is a little bit easier. Yes. Yeah. But just to help with daily office sure. coordination. And um, sure. anyway, that's where we're at with that. So I put it on the agenda the way I requested it to be on the agenda. So, so you could take action on it. I move that we uh, allow Chris to uh, proceed forward with in her hiring quest for the office we'll manager. Second. We'll second that. And uh, I would, I'd really like to see them to one of us in the interview process. We can. I mean, I don't know. The Board of Health doesn't usually because I'm the yeah. I'm the appointed liaison to do the work on behalf of the Board of Health. Okay. I mean, you can, but no, that's never that's good. It's never been part of the. Do you do that with other departments or just my department? I would like to do it with all of the departments. Great. So again, it's something that needs to be addressed across the board. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're back to the handbook. Yeah, 
There's a lot of things I have input Make on about the handbook. <laughs> what did you say? Make the handbook list. I've already got it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the Board of Health doesn't sit in on this. Yeah. The staff yeah. does. Yeah. My team does. I, do I just the thought you might want another opinion. Yeah. I mean, you're... You know, I just want to make sure that the process is the same across the board sure. for all departments. I agree. I agree. Okay, we have a motion and a second to go ahead and allow the uh, hire or proposed hire of an office <clears throat> manager for public health department. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Now we have discussed and consider use of CARES funding for uh, public health department. Okay, so this is kind of encompassing. We can use, we could use, I don't know how much is still sitting there, Abby, you probably don't know off the top of your head. I'm not calling you out, I'm just, you know, last year we had that discussion as well. Just to remind everyone the CARES funding is the money that the county received on behalf of the health department's hours worked during the pandemic. Uh, Melissa at the time was the one that processed those day sheets from the health department employees. And Isn't then that like, I think we need clarification from Shannon if that's still available. Cause it was last year, it there was, was 200 and some thousand dollars. Right, but it was reimbursement for salaries. It wasn't like additional. But it came back unencumbered and it was sitting separate. Mm -hmm. And that's what- I mean, I that's what we get her in here now. And yeah. after. I think we need to, because we need to all know okay. what's possible. Excuse me, Darren. Sorry, playing bumper cars. Chelsea, you're making me nervous sitting behind me. Well, what makes you nervous is when it goes like this. <laughs> yeah. No, I never so went back to people. Uh -huh. I'm kind of the same way. Oh, I, been 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 I worked psych in ER too long. I never sit with my back to people. So, <laughs> but I trust yeah, Chauncey, so that's good. Well. I just <laughs> watched a lot of Westies. You did what? I watched a lot of Westies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we'll wait for Darren to come back. Do you guys want to copy this, D? I'll leave it here. What is it? It's the job description. Oh, sure. I mean, I've got mine's at home. I mean, that's good to be. Yeah, that way you have it. Yeah. All right. Shannon hasn't addressed any of this for quite some time. She needs a little time to do some uh, research on it. She would like to discuss this next week, okay. if that's possible. The accurate information because we got to make sure it's available. Right. Well, and then if it's not, then we have to have a different discussion. But here's here's right. what I wanted the money for. Long story short, you guys know. Um, from our joint work session that we had. And Darren, you, you're serving on the Board of Health. And mm -hmm. um, you guys know that we have tried to implement a step longevity wage matrix, whatever verbiage you wanna call it, for several years. Um, the answer has always been, you can do that if you have money in your budget. Well, we've seen how that does work. However, the health department hasn't had extra revenue sitting in their department to be able to utilize that for. I do have some salary information. I know, just to clarify, I just want to make sure that you understand that that handout that that Burdett gave you was not, that 15% was not Jefferson County. We do have that data if you want it. We printed off some information. The, the that handout, handout that, this is that not specific. Burdett gave us this is a talked about handout. total budgets yeah. for departments. And yeah, if just... your total budget is between 400 thousand and one dollar and six hundred thousand dollars that places you in the top 15 percent of all departments in, in the, the state 49 we are 49th darren that is that you're talking just salaries again you're not talking about total amount of budget for I I your have department the de i have this it we're not all singing off the same sheet of music. No. And let's and again, focus. again, I want to bring up what I've brought up before numerous times. You cannot look at the bottom line of a budget and know exactly what is in that budget. 
you have no idea knowing if the other county departments in other counties have their insurance in there or what that looks like. So you can't compare one public health budget or one sheriff's budget to another county because you don't know how the supervisors have it set up. Because I know for a fact that other county departments don't all have their health insurance within their budget. This is the first year we've done that. So that, No, I mean the other insurance, D. There's always been the six six thousand one hundred and eleven dollars that's always been in our budget. That's always been in our budget since I started 14 years ago. Well, but I know that it has been. Can we talk salaries? Because I did a little research. So I called. Yeah, I got the whole I, thing for my sack. Right here. No, well, I, 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 like I called to, some. I'd like to say something. I'd like to table this until we're ready to deal with it. Right now, we're talking this. We need to have fun. Well, we just we just sat here and watched other departments get raises and nobody said a word. Every time, every time it's brought up about the health department implementing a matrix, it turns into this ugly discussion every time. And I don't understand why. I would like the three of you to answer that. Um, well, what I last week I called Appanoose and Cedar County because they're like size and in the area. And the public health office assistant in Appanoose gets nineteen fifty three an hour. The one in Cedar County gets eighteen forty one. Are you talking about the office assistant? Or are you talking about I'm the administrator? I'm talking the office assistant. Okay, I'm I'm not talking. I'm, I have the administrator salaries right here for the entire state off ISAC. If you'd like a copy, I have it right here. Um, Henry County administrator gets seventy three thousand, and that's starting next year. This and is for my sack for the administrator. For every public health that has how long he or she has been in that position. Right. That's what we're talking about. Let's just use me for an example. Well, last year I called Henry and Wapolo, and you were $10,000 more than both of us. Yeah, we had that conversation at the work yeah. session. Linnell has three employees in her department in Wapolo County. She is highly underpaid. I would not do that job for the salary she's making. This is black and white for my sack. You, you reference them frequently, so here, here it is. I don't know if my vice chair has it or not. Okay. Help. Okay. Go ahead. Do you need another copy? Yeah, one more. There you go. Well, anyway, so it, it has, and you have to keep in mind, there is no set criteria like a county engineer for a public health department manager. Okay, so it's not like you have to have a master's in public health. You can be a nurse, you can have a bachelor's, you can have a master's. I happen to have a bachelor's in nursing. I've been here, it'll be 15 years in October. Scroll down here and look at Jefferson. All right, so when people leave public health, they're not going to another health department. They're gonna to go to the private sector where they can make more. We've had this discussion numerous times. My nurses, you guys should have that from the work session. I'm happy to talk about it again. We work anywhere from 37 and a half to 40 hours a week. It depends. The minimum is 37 and a half. It depends on the responsibilities outside of the normal hour. So just for example, my nurse, this is all public. So it's not like it's a super secret discussion point. Based on our current fiscal year salary, my nurses make less than somebody that just got a raise. My nurses make anywhere from 2686 to 20, 2506 an hour. Can I address something that came up at the uh, work session? Yes. Chauncey, you were there yesterday. There was a, there was a question that, that was raised as to um, the purview of the Board of Health to implement changes to salaries if it's in their budget. And it's kind of a complicated issue. Um, the Board of Health being an independent board has independent spending authority within the allocation given to them by the Board of Supervisors. Essentially, the Board of Supervisors transfers the funds and the Board of Health uh, allocates those funds on an annual basis. So um, the question was raised, if there is excess uh, in the budget at the end of the year, can they independently allocate that in another capacity or another way? Um, the answer is, there's nothing that would keep them from doing that. Um, so uh, essentially the Board of Supervisors has discretion over how much money to allocate to the Board of Health. Uh, the Board of Health makes those determinations being an independent board uh, after the allocation of the Board of Supervisors. There is a provision in Chapter 11 that the Board of Supervisors can um, essentially ask the state auditor to review the decisions of the Board of Health. So. 
uh, to determine whether or not those those allocations are appropriate. Um, so, but to answer the question that was raised at the, at the work session, the Board of uh, Health can make those independent allocations. I just want to make sure that um, everybody was aware of that in this context, for context in this discussion. Thank you. Chauncey, I appreciate you being there as well. Um, when I called Appanoose County, their administrator makes 72,156. Um, this is all public knowledge. Yeah. Uh, do you do you know do you know how do you know how long they've been there? According to your information? Um he's new. The Appanoose County Public Health Administrator is new. Chris has been there, well, he has been there less than <coughs> oh, three years, it says three years. Mm -hmm. So I've been here almost 15. So I, I don't understand what you're trying to point out here. And that takes us back to the handbook. We need to get a step process in place. Well, I've been trying to do that, as you know, for several years, and I can't implement a step increase when you don't allocate the money in my department or, or I continually have cuts or reallocations. Therein lies the issue. Can you tell me how I can do that? If I'm not allocated the funding, then how can I implement a step increase? How, how can I do that? It's basic math. Well, you can't spend more than you have. Right. Or you get an and that's where the Board of Health, that's where you get back into that big quagmire, the overall budget. We're the, like in the top 15%. So my, it's like the money's there. Um, Got to figure out the priorities. The money is not there, D. The money is not there. You have seen, I, I, Melissa, do you want to address this? You're our vice chair. I want to say, I, I can run the score for so many, 15 years now. And we've tried to do this multiple times. And we always come up against the same brick wall. Um, either our money is adjusted away or something else, or it's just a flat no. Um, I brought it up at the meeting. Darren slammed me down pretty hard, but the only difference I can see in a lot of these processes, this is an all-female department. The request has been made multiple times based on that. It's only in the last couple of years that there have been females in other departments that usually have a male representative, and it seems to go through with that an issue. Um, I'm just trying to figure out what the big deal about the public health is versus any other department. I guess the comparison with the salaries that I've done, it's comparable. So again, we're not comparing apples to oranges. We're not going to lose our public health nurses to Appalachia County. We're going to lose them to the hospital here or the hospital in the IC. The other thing to consider when you go somewhere else is our employees have a very good insurance deal that you don't get other places. The deductibles are higher, and I've got that at home. I didn't, don't have it right here, but I know the hospitals because I have their current so insurance information. So and that adds anyone up. Anyone in the treasurer's department or anyone in the sheriff's department, the roads department, the conservation board, Chauncey's office, we're talking about the same thing. This doesn't happen. It's definitely not the only quality health department. I realize that, mm -hmm. but there's not very many. Three quarters office, maybe? In mental health. Okay. Yeah, I just want to make clear that that's certainly not the only one. But for the largest. Right. Um, female department. Oh, yeah. Just to compare, I have the job description for a program manager in Washington County. Washington County, public health nurse program manager to start. Did we talk about this at the Yes, we session. did, but I'm bringing it up again. 33 to $41 an hour to start. So we are not comparing the, I, I, I don't know. I, we, Washington we, County competes with Iowa well, City. So does Jefferson County. D 30 miles an hour is not very far to drive. We had that discussion as well. Do you want professional tenured staff? The last staff I hired was six. I don't know. Let me look. Stand by and I'll tell you. I've been there 15. Deb's been there 12. Mandy's been there nine. And Tammy's been there seven. I think with that comes knowledge and reimbursement. You didn't bat an eye when the other department managers were in here and implemented raises. Well, you I, didn't bat an eye. I remember last 
year and a half ago when we did budget, your department got the 5% raise. And at that time, you didn't want a bonus. And then you wanted a bonus. And this the, you board didn't realize voted that we were okay. to give you a $10,000 that bonus. To clarify, you know this, D. I'm not going to have this discussion again from this point. The $10,000 one time stipend were for hours above and beyond during the pandemic. If you want me to calculate how much it would have cost this county for every employee in that department, I will. Because it would have been more than $10,000 and that didn't cost this county any money because that was paid for with the CARES money. It didn't cost you anything. It was reimbursed. And our chair at the time made sure that the motion was written that way. It didn't cost this county anything. Do you know how many hours we were working? No, you don't have any mm -hmm. idea. None. So to answer that question, when we are salaried department employees, which is another issue that needs to be brought up with wage and hour in the handbook. And we are trained to do that. I'm just going to say this. It would have been more than $10,000. So quit yeah. bringing it up. We're moving past it. In the handbook, it says, and we just, you sent that out, right? The salary doesn't even, um, get bonus. You sent that out last week. I'm not giving a bonus. I, the Board of Health can give a bonus right now. The Board of Health can give a bonus to the employees in the department if we have money left versus returning it to the general fund. However, they're not going to do that. Why? Because we want that money carried forward so we can hire another employee. That's why. I'm not going to give them a bonus every other year. That doesn't happen. And you know it, right? So do the taxpayers of this county. So I don't want to hear about that one-time stipend again moving forward. Because I pray to God we don't have another pandemic. Because I'm here to tell you, we would switch it and I would not be an exempt employee during that time. Because it's my understanding after the fact that that could have happened. And so, I could have went to a non-exempt employee status and got overtime. So let's talk about So process. I don't know how we would have paid for that, but it would have been a hell of a lot more than what we got. We're trying to get the handbook updated. And I've been first, doing that for first months. First step was all department heads received, I believe it was last week, I didn't an get email email last week saying that said, send anything. your job descriptions to all three of us. Did you send that out? And we haven't gotten I any. I sent it to... Shannon to be sent to she all the department heads, week. and she was going to send it the first part of this week. Yeah, so I didn't get it last back. week, D, just to clarify. Okay, so she was on vacation, which she so deserves. It will be sent. Okay, so yeah. back to the original statement mm -hmm. and my question as a tenured department manager within this county why is it always a bone of contention with the health department? Do you feel that your public health nurses are overpaid? Is that what I'm hearing this department, this board of supervisors say? Because that's what I'm hearing. It's comparable with other counties that are like size. You cannot compare nursing salaries with like size counties. Do you compare that with the engineer? Yeah. Did you? Yeah, we did. We did. And you do that with everybody, else, but yep. his department just gets raises and nobody questions it. Step raises, longevity it. raises. I'm just making appointment and a point. Yeah. Point. Again, so we're back to square zero. Again, again, we are. I have never met so much resistance in a professional capacity in my life. It's, it's fair and unequitable across the board. It's Chris, not the same. Chris, I'm gonna say something. In today's employment climate, I do understand nurses at that hospital or the, the traveling nurses that they hire. Mm -hmm. They make incredible money. I'm not talking about their salaries. Got, though, they, these young ladies, young, could um, they could be making a lot more if they were somewhere. And I'm not and comparing travel nursing salaries. I know I you know wouldn't even be able I'm, to afford that. Chris, let me finish. What I'm saying. You know, with today's climate, they could go anywhere and get, make more money, which, you know, is neither here nor there, I suppose. But uh, I'd, I've said for a long time, we need to redo this handbook. 
We need to, so we what need are you going to do in the meantime, Susie, when other departments just did that? If I had the $22,000 back that I gave to the back to you guys as the supervisors, I would have already implemented step raise and it wouldn't have been a, it would have been a moot point because I had the money in my budget to do it until you reallocated it. And I'm sorry, we had to do that. It's my I'm understanding sorry. that the, one of the other agenda items that one of the things is going to be used out of the general fund. So we'll, I'll bring that up during public comment. So how do you want me to move forward with this? Because I'm not going to keep coming and have this discussion mm -hmm. when I'm met with the same resistance and lack of understanding and the lack of funding within my public health department. Now, Chris, I believe there are people that are listening. You know, that we're listening. Then why isn't anything ever different? I don't know. I've said for a long time, we need to fix the handbook. And I, I know this. It'll take months to fix the handbook. I've been here when we've done it before. It's better than years. That's true. So I have. Hey, um, Chris, so you're going to, would you do this? Would you work on that salary bonus? I have whatever. given you guys a copy of the matrix. In three that's times. Washington County, right? The Board of Health adopted the matrix. Mm -hmm. They wanted to implement the matrix. Uh -huh. There was work that went into that. Salary comparison from numerous numerous places of employment there was time and effort put into that mm -hmm. when i was working there of which that money went back to the general fund it didn't go to chris Estel. if anybody's asking that question the money did not go to chris Estel. it went back to the general fund so just for point of clarification yeah darren can we set up a time to start this just Give us a time with Jack and let them know so we they know we've started on the handbook. I would like some action from this board before that. I want to find out if there's CARES money available. I want to know how much CARES money there is. Mm -hmm. And, that's and what, even if there's not, then I'm asking this board to allow a budget increase so I can move forward with a wage matrix when we have our next Board of Health meeting, which will be July 21st at 16 at, at 1800, 6 p.m. And you're always more than welcome yeah. to attend. Yeah. Um, I believe Shannon is looking that information up. For next week. So, And can we have Shannon send that to all of us, including Chris, when that happens? Mm -hmm. So we all know at the same time. Mm -hmm. Darren, I want to ask you a question uh, as a supervisor. So because I know that you know you can't always speak to either board, but today you're wearing your supervisor hat. Do you feel that the nurses are overpaid in the health department? No, I don't think anybody's overpaid. Right Do you feel that it's appropriate to implement a wage matrix from this chair that you're sitting in? You I believe seen the that it's fair to implement a matrix that includes what your total budget is. It isn't just putting on a line item 10% for all employees. And that's what we have always seen from you, Chris. Not always. And that's not, not what always. the other departments, the whole time I've been here, that's all I've seen. So you can't say, for me, not always, okay? For me, it has been always. Well, I just wanna clarify, if we would have, you knew from the email correspondence that the Board of Health was going to implement the wage matrix. You had that email sent to you and I can print it off and give you the dates. The Board of Health had agreed to implement the wage matrix. Within a couple of weeks, then I was approached by you to have the money reallocated. So you knew as a Board of Health member that that money was gonna be utilized to implement a wage matrix. Am I correct? Yes, I am correct. I will send you the dates of the email. Without cause, there was money in my budget to give us all a step raise or a matrix. And the money was removed from my department, Darren, mm -hmm. without any information or feedback from the Board of Health. And you had a couple of vacant positions part of the year. So is that's that the money that I was going to use, D, to hire somebody and to in implement the wage matrix. But I can't because the money was removed. So I can't magically make $22,000 reappear. Right. It was going to be $16,000 and some change to implement the current wage matrix that the Board of Health adopted. That's from Washington County. $16,000 is so what I'm talking be, about. 
how many 16,000 divided by four people, 4,000? It depends. It, they wouldn't all get the same amount. No, it's but based. that seems pretty significant. Maybe. It's not 18% like you just approved for the treasurer. So, but they started, there's like 33,000 a year. In the, they're not, they, do they have a professional license? Do they have a master's or a bachelor's degree? What is their education level? No, I know. I'm, I'm, you can't compare me to the treasurer's so, office. I'm asking no, an honest I'm discussion and I'm getting angry as you can tell, because this no. is not the first time we've had this discussion. And that's why I think what would help is if we agree on some metrics. What the I would, Board of Health agreed on the metrics, D. No, I mean, what I like to find out is like size counties D, and population. Which, I'm going to walk away right now because you and I've had this discussion before. Right. You continue to ask the same redundant questions with no action. The Board of Health has agreed on the matrix and has approved it. What I need from you as a board is funding. I don't need anything else from you. Funding. I have a board that oversees us. The other part of the equation is outcomes. So, D, you know that. I gave you that at the work session. You are getting the reports that the Board of Health is getting. You get the same reports now. Well, that is a new I know reporting they're doing process. Steps doing We're not process. discussing that right now. No, but that's outcomes. I know that. We are not discussing that right now. I discussed that with you three weeks ago. And we discussed all this three weeks ago. Jesus, you talk in circles. I'm done. Thanks for your time. Let me know what works because I'm not going to have this discussion again. You take no action on a discussion point. I think our action points are. How come, how come everybody else? We're setting just, up. With no, no. How come everybody else just went through a similar process and got approved? Why? Because there was money in their budget. You took the money out of my budget without cause. That's the bottom line. Well, let's find out what Shannon comes up with next week. <clears throat> It doesn't matter the if there's no CARES funding, you're still going to arbitrarily not approve it. Darren, you put this on the agenda for next week. Yeah, yes. it'll be on the agenda for next week. Mm -hmm. OK, um, we'll move on to uh, discuss and consider resolution authorizing the board to supervise your chairperson. <laughs> to sign and submit Destination Iowa application for the Jefferson County Prairie Ridge Campground Project, and if funded, to sign all contract-related documents. Okay, so, so this is that grant. That's the Destination Iowa grant that may or may not happen. Um, because <clears throat> there'll be a lot of competition for it. And it's pretty straightforward. So the resolution reads as follows, whereas the Board of Supervisors has determined that increasing the tour tourism opportunities and outdoor experiences <clears throat> in rural areas is a high priority for the Jefferson County Board of Supervisors and Whereas the Board of Supervisors for Jefferson County, Iowa, intend to submit an application requesting assistance from the Iowa Economic Development Authority, IEDA, through the Destination Iowa funding source for the Jefferson County Prairie Ridge Campground Project, not to exceed 40% of the eligible project costs, and whereas local match requires that at least 60% match of the project cost be secured at the time of application, Jefferson County Board of Supervisors has designated $440,000 of ARPA funds and Jefferson County Conservation has designated $259,858 for an overall project cost of $1,166,430, Jefferson County Concert, oh, excuse me. Whereas the Board of Supervisors has authorized the Jefferson County Conservation Board to complete and submit all reporting requirements. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Supervisors in Jefferson County, Iowa, that 
The chairperson of the Jefferson County Board of Supervisors is authorized to sign all documents related to the Prairie Ridge Campground application to the Destination Iowa Grant Opportunity and if funded is hereby authorized to sign all grant related contract contract documents be it further resolved that the jefferson that the county has authorized pathfinders rc and d to submit the destination iowa application and all above listed funds are designated as stated okay so do I have a motion to approve this resolution? I'll make the motion. Second. I have a motion from Sandquist and a second from Drish to approve the resolution. Um, do uh, we need so a voice vote from each of us for this or can this be a... Can we have some discussion? Yeah, I need... Okay, so let's have some discussion on this. So, Dee. Sean, why don't you just tell the rationale for this? And I know you have before, but I know we have some new people here today. And this goes, conservation has been around 50 years. And, and the governor recently came out with this destination Iowa grant. We think it's a long shot that we would get it, but if you don't apply, you don't get it. But it would help get them moving and help your fundraising for future projects and tell us what you have in mind. Okay, so this is, uh, first of all, it's on the east side of Jefferson County Park. Uh, we've got kind of in the process some designs being developed for uh, a campground, obviously, as part of it. That'll be the first phase if this grant goes through. Uh, but basically, we're we're just putting in some things on that property. There's about 40, uh, soon to be maybe 50 acres of undeveloped property that we're going to put a road through. Eventually, another shelter and uh, like like they use in our old picnic area, we call it the, the a very popular. And then potentially. You know, down the road as as grants and things come in, this this grant is just kind of interesting timing between that and the ARP money. Uh, we we anticipated that it would take many years for these developments to you know, be funded, and with this destination Iowa grant, it gives an opportunity to speed that up. There's there's a uh, I think $40 million in the outdoor rec part of that grant, which is statewide. So you're right, there's going to be a lot of competition, but it's, it's worth a try if you can bring in $400,000, you know, by you contributing 400 and some, and then we put in some, uh, it lets us do a project that we wouldn't be able to do potentially for many years if we had to bank money and uh, do it at a slower process. But this is a, a campground uh, with modern uh, facilities. Our camp, our current campground is over 40 years old. It's a little small and congested at times, and sometimes it's clear full, and we have people that you know have to not camp or do something else. And I think the other part of this that the governor recognizes and the economic this is under economic development grants that this is a way to bring people into community. Uh, they spend money other ways, or they may come to the community because we have nice parks. Uh, and I think that's the, you're not just doing this for me, you're doing it for the betterment of the community and the state. That's why the governors put the money out. They're trying to attract people into the state. And I think, you know, fingers crossed, it's a long shot, but it's, it's worth trying. Uh, and with Pathfinders doing a lot of the work, hopefully it'll, it'll come out as a good project. But that's that's basically what's going on. We're looking to bring in 40% of the money through this grant that we need. And, and you guys just happen to have some other money that five years ago, you wouldn't probably be talking to me about this. So uh, that's where we're at. And I, I think it's a, a good project. It's just whether it's as good as 
what other people submit throughout the state. It will, there'll be a little time that we have to wait to see, but. Okay. All right. So we need a uh, voice and acknowledgement vote. Um, we had a motion by Sandquist, a second by Drish. So Sandquist? Aye. Drish? Aye. Hamilton? Aye. So we'll need to sign these. All right. Okay, next on our agenda is to discuss and consider the concrete projects at the Jefferson County Law Center. Bart, our Sheriff Bart Richmond. Yeah, we've been talking about this for uh, since last year. I have three different spots over at the Law Center that need mm -hmm. fixed. Um, I'm wanting to repair two of them out of current fiscal year money. Uh, it's a matter of timing with the contractor coming in, whether it be July, August, but it, it, it'll be this year yet. And it's just a matter of spending that money out of current fiscal year and not create an auditing problem by getting the checks beforehand. So we want to wait and issue those when the work's being done. So, you know, I asked to be on the agenda to, to make sure whether we need a resolution to do that or you openly agree and record that that's how I'm going to do it. Um, I've talked to the auditor's office. You know, usually we don't want checks issued before the work is right. done. Um, but I'm wanting to complete two sections of concrete out of current fiscal year money. And the contractor that you've talked to about this said that they can't get to the work until July, maybe August, yes. more likely. Yes. Oh. August was the original date. He, he thought maybe here a few weeks ago, it might be earlier. So what does the auditor's office recommend? Um, I think on their end of things, they recommend not doing the checks early until work is performed. So basically next year, you might need a budget amendment if we- If, that, if that's the way you wanna do it, if I, if I, if you did say, well, yeah, I don't you like can to spend do the checks current... ahead of time, no. especially the county, because well, then people don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to be getting large checks to hold or anything like that. No. So if, I, if I'm allowed to spend the money out of current fiscal year, but it'll fall after July one, and then do a budget amendment for that money yeah. next spring again. It's, it's too much to prepay and take a risk. On. Right. But yeah, the, and we've, uh, we've talked about this for months at a service agency, so it's not a new project by any means. Right, in our past service agency meeting this last week, the, uh, the city has agreed to go ahead and pay their 33% of the project costs. And they'll be in this similar situation that we are, that they won't authorize their checks until after the project's completed. Right. Um, but their difference is, is that they don't have to pay the contractor directly. They reimburse back to the sheriff's department, their portion that's been being spent of, of that total dollar amount that's uh, being charged for the concrete replacement. The sheriff's department will pay for it all up front out of your budget and then get it back from the city as a reimbursement for the final cost, is that correct? C correct, 100% would come out of my budget and then 
whatever reimbursement the city gives for, for housing there at the law center, yeah, it does come back to the county, not necessarily to, to my budget, but it comes right. back to the county. So it 100% is paid out of my budget. Yes, that is correct. So, and it totals just over 100,000 for the two pieces of concrete. Okay. But the, is that the, the front entrance? The whole front parking area, which is breaking up, and then a smaller section on the east side. Okay. I hadn't known about the east side, but I did. Well, we also have a rear section that needs yeah. fixed at some point, too. Of course. <laughs> um, so, how would this work? Your money would go back to the general fund, mm -hmm. and then you would file for a budget amendment. Probably by next spring, I guess. I guess when the check gets issued, if it's say August or first of September, then it, yeah, if you agree that 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 money was from my current fiscal year, and then I just put it in a budget amendment in the spring for it. Mm -hmm. I just I don't want to prepay it. Since the money is already there in your budget, you can to utilize again as a department head you can appropriate that money any way that you want all you're asking for is authorization that once you've appropriated it from this fiscal year's budget which you have the money in the budget to do that from savings that you made in other areas of your budget you can ask the board to hold that money until next year and then use a budget amendment in order to pay those bills as they've come in this coming fall. Correct, mm -hmm. correct. That's right. that's what I'm trying to. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, just fine. so everybody's on the same page, the same page. or supervisors and the audit. And I know you've done a lot of cost saving changes this year, mm -hmm. which is amounted in some savings. Because when you first told me about this project, I'm like, so why do you have this money in your budget? Well, we've been working on it all these budget years. Yeah. So. So. I know. He's been making some positive changes. So. Okay. So do we need an action on that or just a, because he hasn't spent it yet. It's just a process. Well, we don't have anything to act on. Anything to really act on. At just this process, point. it'll come back and then part of the budget. But when we come it comes time. Okay. I think I want to ask Shannon though if we need a resolution to do that versus just a voice vote right now okay. from the three of us. I wouldn't think so, but good to clarify. Long. <laughs> yeah. I almost need a break. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. How <laughs> many more items on that? Uh, 21. And today it's a national holiday. That's right. Actually, I'm off today. You are? Uh -huh. You are. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thanks for volunteering yeah, your time. That was a goodness of my heart. <laughs> I, like I said, I'll take tomorrow off to make oh, up for it. Yeah. So. <laughs> you know, I, um, yeah. 
Okay, so to make this cleaner, we should have a resolution. Shannon will develop a resolution because what this is doing is earmarking funds um, that will be in the fund balances. So if we're asked why a fund balance seems to be so high uh, in relationship to what it was the previous year, we have a resolution in hand saying that this portion of that money is already allocated and doesn't isn't to be included in that fund balance as something moving on into the future. Say it increases a fund balance to 25% and the fund balance really should be somewhere about the 15 to 20% range. Then we have a reason why that extra 5%, 10% shows up in that fund balance. And we know that it is encumbered coming up for that fiscal year. There will need to be a budget amendment done at later in the spring mm -hmm. to go along with this. And it will, um, again, come from monies that we are designating right now to be able to use that from the fund balance that it would be transferred back to if it's not used within this fiscal year. Okay, so next week we will have a resolution supplied by Shannon in order to say just that. Okay. All right. And I'll get her the numbers. She'll right. probably need those. Yeah, she'll need, she'll need the numbers on that. 